Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Broken Sword, The Shadow of the Templars. In the last episode, well, we finished our trip over in Oiland, to be sure, to be sure we did, at Lock... God, stop doing that. Uh, over at Lockman, we learned uh, about Moffachon in, in that weird little crypt in the castle. We need to find out what Moffachon is all about, something to do with a hanging man. Um, and I need to find out more about the mysterious Marquis, indeed. Uh, yeah, so we came back here to Paris, uh, we talked a little bit to Nico, she says we should still try and find Lobano here at the Croon Museum, and also maybe go talk to the inspectors again as well, Rosso. But first let's go in, see if, uh, let's see if he's here, Lobano. Hmm. No, it's the same guard, and the same little thing, but at least now we have the, uh, the gem that goes in the tripod, so now we really do need this. How am I going to steal this? No, monsieur. No, eh, no. Okay, okay. The case contained the tripod shown on the manuscript. Maybe we should ask him if Lobano's here now. Okay, he doesn't know anything more about Lobano, so I guess he's not here. What about the gem? Does he want to know about the gem? I found this gem at a medieval site in Ireland. That means nothing to me, monsieur. How did you manage to get this job? I had the right qualifications. A military manner, squeaky issues, and an irrational hatred of children. Oh my goodness, I could do his job. <laughs> okay, my shoes aren't squeaky and I don't have a military manner, but the rest of it, I'm A-OK. -okay. Uh, right, so... <laughs> I guess uh, this is a bit of a bust. Thanks for your help. I wonder if we need to do the whole tricking him with the window and then hiding in the... Oh, one second, actually. Can we go around the back? We can't, can we? No, this is it. So... Hmm, unless it's worth going to the, the police station. I'm not sure. Uh, let's, let me try, let me try um, the whole window thing again, just to make sure. Because maybe we do need to, maybe the game will let us do this now, now that we have the gem. This is ridiculous. I could be here for hours. Alright, so apart from letting us go into the uh, sarcophagus again, can't really do much. Can't interact with the window anymore. Still can't topple this over. Still can't really interact with the tripod. So for now... I'm going to leave. I think let's go to the police station, talk to Rosso. All right. Any updates for me, Rosso, or your very inept sidekick, whatever your name is? Sergeant Moo? Uh, yes. Sergeant Moo. More like move out the way. Have you heard of a man called Marquet? Yes. He used to be known as the Mole of Mamad. I have he's been hospitalized, probably by one of his rivals. Oh, juicy. Which hospital was Marquet taken to? The Agenmeyer Clinic, in the Avenue des Hérissons. Why was Marquet known as the Mole of Montmartre? Because he lived in Montmartre, I suppose. Yeah, but why the Mole? I don't know. Maybe he ruined people's lawns. Maybe, maybe. And who are these? These are the guys outside the uh, hotel, aren't they? I'd like to report an assault. Yes, monsieur? Where is the victim? I'm the victim. I've been harassed by a pair of thugs. I see. And where did this alleged assault take place? Outside the Hotel Ubu. They stopped me as I was leaving and went through my pockets. Could you describe the suspects, monsieur? One looked like a gorilla, and the other looked like a weasel. Their names are Flap and Guido. Boom. I'll get them this time. Mm, sounds like you've heard of them, maybe. Alright, so, uh, we need to go to the hospital, maybe? Go find Marquet? Do I want to... I'm not going to show him the gem. No way. See you later, Sergeant. Can I speak to Rosso? Is it going to let me? It was just some police paperwork, a search warrant. No, doesn't seem like it. Uh... Marque is in the local hospital. I'll head right over. Okay, let's go. Wait, where was it? Ah. Oh. 
There it is. I felt a little guilty as I tried the door, like I was about to rob a grave. I gripped the handle with an involuntary tremble in my hand and pulled. The door was locked. <laughs> Whoops, I mean, I only wanted to look at it, but I guess we're trying to break in straight away. There was no sign of the crew of the ambulance. Hmm, could we try and unlock it? Smash it in. No, all right, let's just go inside. Oh, look at this hospital. Is this really how hospitals look in Paris? This is beautiful. Somehow I don't think it is. Holy moly. The guy seemed to be practicing his air of authority. Today he was working on his withering stare. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Really? If you wish to make an appointment, see the receptionist. Shake my hand. May I have the honor of shaking you by the hand? You may not. I don't encourage physical contact between my staff. You know what? Out of all the excuses I've heard, that one does make the most sense so far. I'll give you that. Here, have a snotty tissue. What do you make of this tissue, sir? If I were you, I'd have this sample analyzed. All right, all right, all right. enough messing around, all this tomfoolery. Let's get to the Marquet. I'm looking for a guy named Jacques Marquet. In which department does he work? He doesn't. He's a patient. I see. You do realize there are strict policies regarding visiting hours, don't you? I don't care. I'm George Stobart. I can do anything. This is important. I have to talk to Marquet urgently. We make no exceptions to the rules. It's a matter of life and death. The railroad running of this hospital is a matter of life and death. That's why we have rules. Hmm. I don't think we're going to convince this guy, you know. I think I ought to warn you that Marquet is not what he seems. Explain yourself. He's in league with a bunch of guys who want to take over the world. Nonsense. Besides, Marquez's employers have paid in advance for one of our most exclusive private rooms. Could you tell me who Marquez's employers are? Certainly not. Oh, well, that's the end of that then, I guess. Are we going to have to sneak around? I think we might have to sneak around the hospital. Uh, do a picture? Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, sir, I do not. Do you, uh, do you want a very priceless, valuable gem? Look at this, Doc. It's a genuine medieval-type gemstone. Yes, so I see. Remarkable. I have to take this gem to Marquet. He might be able to explain its significance. My dear chap, Marquet has other things on his mind right now. Like what? Is catheter for one. Oh, you. You're hilarious, Doc. Well, I gotta go now. Thanks for your help. I gotta break into your hospital. The woman managed to look overworked and hassled, though she didn't appear to be doing anything. Oh, that is a real skill. Having that, you know, looking busy but actually doing nothing at all at work. Mm. Well done to you. Excuse me. Yes, sir? Is this the Hagenmeyer Clinic? That's correct. I thought I was in a garden center. Oh, the plans. They were my idea. A little greenery to evoke the spirit of nature. How may I help you? And what about the patients with hay fever? How ignorant of you. I'm here to see Jacques Marquet. Oh, yes. Are you related to our client, sir? You know what we're going to do. We're a, we're a pathological liar. Yeah, I'm his uh, long-lost brother. A brother half his age with a different name and an American accent. Yeah, people always say that. I blame Mom. We were separated at an early age. After a mix-up in the nursery at the Oakland shopping mall. I've never heard anything so ridiculous in all my life. I guess not. 
Oops, are we going to get punished now for lying? Should we have just been honest? Maybe honesty is the best policy. So, do I get to see Marquet before the funeral? That attitude will get you nowhere. My instructions were quite clear. No one gets to see Marquet. So unless you can prove you're a relative or a close acquaintance, you're wasting your time here. Oh, we'll think of a way, don't you worry about that. Now shake my hand. I'd like to shake you by the hand. Don't be fresh, young man. <laughs> Has Marquet been visited by a man in a clown costume? Oh, no. You haven't seen a man in disguise? Well, there's Theodore the Bear. He comes every Thursday to entertain the children. Personally, I think he scares them half to death in that crummy old bear suit. If I was stuck on my back with tubes in every orifice, he's the last person I'd want to see. Has Marquet had a visit from a pair of gangsters? I should hope not. Can you describe them? A thin guy who looks like a weasel and his friend, the gorilla. Sounds as if they escaped from a zoo. Oh, this is getting nowhere, isn't it? Do you want a gem? What does this gem suggest to you? I advise you not to flash that around. Yeah, that's, that's solid advice right there. Well, look, I'm, I'm electronics. I'm here to fix the machines. Look at this ID pass. So you're Merlin. Marquet has been asking for you. For me? Yes. He was shouting your name when they brought him in here. Now, let me see. He was on Ward B-12, as I recall. Oh, he's being transferred to... Oh, dear. He's on Ward J-2. That's... Nurse Grendel's ward. Nurse Grendel? What's so bad about Nurse Grendel? She runs that ward like a South American prison. Keeping a well-disciplined ward isn't a crime, is it? Well-disciplined? In the discipline and punishment stakes, she'd whip the butt off the Marquis de Sade. Everything, I mean everything, is done to a strict routine. Six o'clock, alarm call. Six ten, bowel movements, and woe betide anyone who doesn't have a result. Those patients of hers are like Pavlova's dogs. She sounds like a real nightmare. And then some. Sounds like we have a, a Nurse Ratched on our case here. If Nurse Grendel is that bad, how come the authorities tolerate her? She's like part of the furniture. I was beginning to get the picture. This woman was jealous, with a big green capital J. How do I find Nurse Grendel's ward? Down the corridor on the left, turn right at the senior consultant's washroom. Right again at the executive coffee lounge. Bear left past the administrator's sauna. And turn left at the end. That's J2. And good luck. Oh, I hope I didn't actually have to listen to those directions, because I wasn't listening. <laughs> uh, bye. Thanks for your help, ma'am. You're welcome. Right, let's just go get lost in hospital. That's what you do, right? They're often very uh, maze-like. As I turned the corner, I saw the source of the hellish noise which echoed through the corridors. It was an industrial polishing machine with an odd-looking guy in tow. I can't get over how nice this hospital looks. This is more like a palace. He looked blissfully happy for no apparent reason. You're right there. Hello. What's that? I said hello. Oh, hi. I'd like to talk to you for a minute. That's what I thought you said. Don't look so down in the mouth. No matter how bad things seem, I never let life get on top of me. Oh, yeah? What's your secret? Why, it's easy. All you have to do is smile and whistle this little tune. You know what? If you start whistling, I'll bust you in the teeth. It's a deal. Well, this guy seems very chipper, doesn't he? It doesn't sound remotely French, which is a bit strange, but um, never mind. Uh, let's see. Do I really want to talk to him about the the goons? And well, actually, he might be able to give me directions to J2. Have you seen any unsavory characters lurking about in the quarters? No, sir, I haven't. But I've got nothing to worry about. What's that, Mr. Shiny? You'd take good care of the rascals, I'll bet you would. With a friend like him, I've no fear of oppressors. It must be a great comfort. He is.
Uh, has this guy escaped from the psychiatric ward or something? I mean, he's sort of wearing gowns. Mm -hmm. Would Mr. Shiny be your polishing machine by any chance? Please, don't call him that. He's more of a friend than a machine. I've had Mr. Shiny for three years and he's never let me down once. How come you got so attached to a polishing machine? I asked you not to call him that. He's got a name, you know. Uh, yeah, Mr. Shiny. It's just that... You think it's odd, don't you? I don't mind. The rest of the staff think I'm twisted. I heard them snorking behind me back when I gave Mr. Shiny his weekly pull through. Well, I'm glad that you and Mr. Shiny have such a healthy relationship, but we need to get on to more important matters, life and death here. Do you know where I'd find a patient called Marquet? No, I'm not allowed on the wards with Mr. Shiny. All right, well then you're just useless. Although maybe, just maybe, you'll shake my hand. Would you like to shake my hand? Not until I've washed, if you don't mind, sir. Hmm, bye. See you later. Yeah, take care now. Okay, so you're going to get back to polishing. Very good. Ooh, is that a bin? The connector in the socket supplied electricity to the polishing machine. Oh, it's that. Right, gotcha. Do we need to turn it off? Do we need to distract him, maybe? The door didn't have a sign or label or any kind of identification. So we can go that way. This door... Hmm, why is this door an option? Hey, now! You can't go in there! How come? I'm responsible for the contents of that cupboard. Okay, we definitely need to get in there. We need to turn off his machine, I'm guessing. So maybe... Can we just pull it out? As I tugged the plug out of the socket, the polishing machine coughed, spluttered, and died. Mr. Shiny, no! Mr. Shiny, what's wrong, pal? Don't just watch him. Get in there. Oh, nice. Now we're going to pretend to be a doctor. Is there any person we can't pretend to be? Any profession? I don't think so. Right, onto the ward. Oh no, there she is. Good afternoon, doctor. Oh, hi. Is this ward J2? Yes, sir. The patients are ready for your inspection, doctor. Uh, thank you, nurse. You'll need this, doctor. She gave me a long, narrow metal box and a stunning smile. Thanks. Uh, could you take a look at the client in bed number three now? His name is Eric Sopmarsh. No. No, I'm very busy. I, I, need, I need to focus on one particular patient. The clown. Do you have any clowns on the ward? Why, yes, we do. A professional clown. I'll bet he lightens the place up. Hardly. Monsieur Boissy has been in a coma for the last three months. Oh, no. What's wrong with Boissy? He was involved in a very nasty accident. A silly stunt involving a unicycle. His current condition is due to post-traumatic shock. It's unlikely he'll ever perform as a clown again. It's an ill wind that blows nobody any good. Do you have a patient named Marquet on this ward? Oui, monsieur. He is in the private room at the end of the ward. He has been placed in strict isolation. Why is Marquet in quarantine? If you wish to know more, you'll have to speak to Herr Hagenmeier. All I know is that Marquet's room is strictly out of bounds. I thought this was that evil lady, but I... It was it Grendel or something? But maybe that's not her then. Because I thought she'd be Mina. Do you know who paid for Marquet's room? No, of course I don't. Preferential treatment like that must cost an arm and a leg. That's not my concern, monsieur. Would you like to shake hands with me? Well... No, it's okay. Forget it.
Oh, we were so close. What is this? What is this device? It's for taking the patient's blood pressure, doctor. <laughs> you think maybe she'd start to suspect. <laughs> the doctor just comes up to you and says, what, how does this work? What do, what do I do with this? <laughs> well, thank you, nurse. Let's try Au revoir, it. Monsieur. I feel like now we're sort of crossing the line into actual real criminal activity. Hello, Kui, hello, hello to you, yes. As in, if we are actually pretending to be a doctor and we're going to take... Doctor! Oh. Hello. What is it? You haven't taken my blood pressure. Yeah, if we start doing this, this is bad. <laughs> oh, we're going to try it, though. Seems fine to me. You're not doing it right. Of course I am. No, you're not. Dr. Monroe never did it like that. I can't take a satisfactory reading while you're excited like this. I'll come back later. Oh, nice, nice get out. Yeah, well done. Do we want to talk to him? This guy didn't look sick to me. He didn't have spots or stitches, and he certainly didn't have a fever. Hmm, suspicious? Oh, doctor. What now? You didn't finish taking my blood pressure. Oh no, we're going to get it wrong again, aren't we? Okay, let's try again. You don't have the first idea what you're doing, do you? I'll come back when you've recovered your manners. All right, I think we need to learn how to use this. Oh, nurse, help me. Pardon me, nurse. Oui, monsieur. Do you want this, uh... Device for measuring blood pressure? Yeah, do you want it back? No, thank you. Oh, damn. Can, can you do it for me? Thank you, nurse. Au revoir, monsieur. Maybe I need to talk to the guy first. Hello, anybody home? Who are you? My name is Dr. Stobart, and I'm here to steer you down the rocky road to recovery. Dr. Monroe said there was no cure for what I've got. Your problem is you stayed in bed too long. Are you sure you're a qualified doctor? You better believe it. <laughs> this is so messed up. What can you tell me about Marquet? He's the man in the private room, isn't he? That room was mine before I was tossed out like a common squatter. Oh, someone's jealous. Do you know what's wrong with Marquet? They won't even say what's wrong with me. Tell me, Doctor, what's your opinion? Uh, it's too early to say. But I've been here for three months. Blimey. What's your impression of Nurse Grendel? She's a very... Efficient, young woman. Efficient? You make her sound like a vacuum cleaner. I've no complaints. Wait, so there is Nurse Grendel. I mean, she seems fine to me. She seems perfectly pre pleasant. The woman in reception described Nurse Grendel as a monster. Well, that's simply not true. She's quite strict, but that's her job, isn't it? You've got to have discipline in a place like this. Uh, I mean, I would I would say she's strict, but she's just handed this blood pressure thing to this r random guy who doesn't know how to use it and has made it quite clear, and she's still like, yeah, go ahead. It's fine. <laughs> I'm going to take your blood pressure. Why? I'm a doctor. It's my job. Seems fine to me. You're not doing it right. Okay, so that's... We can't do that still. Um, shake my hand. Uh, no. I'll come back later. Is he going to let us go past here now? Or is he going to keep moaning? You haven't been... Oh, here we go. Blimey. Being a doctor is hard work. When's my break? You... I'll keep... I have to... How come he gets preferential treatment? It's because he's got money, isn't it? I'll come back when you've dealt with that chip on your shoulder. Okay, you're going to let me go? Maybe I need to find another way around. 
still haven't finished. Okay, right, yeah, we need this is this is a little puzzle here, I'm guessing. I'll keep quiet. I have to see Oh, it's but I'll come back. Okay, right, so yeah, we can't go around this way. Can I put his curtain too so he shuts up? The nurse was stunningly beautiful. The guys on this ward sure were lucky to be in her care. Oh, George. Calm down, will ya? Pardon me, nurse. Oui, monsieur. Can you deal with that guy? No, that won't give me won't give me an option to select him. Will you marry me? Does this gem mean anything to you? It's beautiful, but I've never seen it before. No, all right then. Very well. Thank you, nurse. Au revoir, monsieur. Let's uh, let's head back this way. Maybe there's an, uh, a different way to go. Oh yeah, what's what's that way? Or is that the way I came in? Who's that guy? Hello? Is that me? <laughs> Is there a twin? No, no, no. The woman managed to look over... No, not, not her. The young man's face was full of eagerness and enthusiasm. I figured he was fresh from college. Oh, interesting. Let's talk to him. Hi, I'm... Do no, not... I keep clicking her. I'm not clicking her. Yes. Oh. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Yes, sir? Pleased to meet you, sir. Call me George if you like. Are you sure? Yeah, that's my name. My name's Benoit, but everyone calls me Benny. Bunny? That's right. I used to have this cute habit when I was a kid. Uh, keep it to yourself, Benoit. Now, Benoit, I, 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 maybe we need to pretend to be, you know, as a senior doctor, we need to make sure he knows what he's doing and give him a little bit of a test. Like, how, how Benny, Benoit Bunny, would you perform a blood pressure test? Here... Take this pressure gauge. Thank you, sir. Uh, what do you want me to do with it? Well, uh, keep it safe until I think of something. Oh, okay. That didn't really work. Um, and now we've just lost our thing. Great. Okay. Do you know anything about a patient named Marquet? Uh, no, sir. I don't know much about any of the patients. I've never met a doctor who admits that he's only human. Uh, I'm only a trainee, sir. I'm sure I'll get the hang of things. Do you know the nurse on Ward J2? No, monsieur. This is my first day here. I can't wait to get my hands dirty. I was talking about treating my first patient, of course. I didn't mean to get my hands dirty with a nurse. Shut up, Benoit. Okay, sir. Oh. Oh, Benoit. I mean, that's, it just so happens to be your very first day. Good excuse, Benoit. And then we pull on his hair. It's like, this is a wig. Oh, wait, it's not. Uh, shake my hand. Shake my hand, Benoit. I don't think that's a good idea, sir. How come? Dermatitis. Well, I don't have dermatitis. I do. All right, let's get away from him. See you later. Right. Can we go down that way? Is this going to be a different... No, it's the same way. So these lead the same way, these two paths? Yes. Excuse me, sir. Aha! Just the man. You must be the new boy. Uh, yeah, I must be. Well, uh, stop wandering about and make yourself useful. Bunny, come here, boy. This is Benoit, my nephew. Can I trust you to look after him? Oh, yes, yes, yes. He is fresh out of medical school. It will open his eyes to see a real doctor on the job. I'll bet. Show him around. Let him see some real suffering. Ah, oh, is he going to follow me now? Come on, Benny. Bunny? Benoit? Let's go this way. No, you're not following me. Listen to me, I'm in charge. Or maybe he was. Hang on, maybe if I go through here, is he going to follow me? Oh, where have you gone now? Oh, there you are. Oh, good. It's just a bit slow. Okay. You. Hey, Benoit. Yes, sir? Go and take that test. You still have that gauge I gave you? 
Ah, yes. What do you want me to do with it? Ha, 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 ha. Use it on Eric Sopmarsh. Okay. Okay, have you, have you done it? Okay, we can just go, never mind. It's gonna be a long blood pressure taking. Oh, here's the private room. With his own little guard. Wowza, okay. Uh, hello. He sat like a statue of a sack of potatoes, but the cop's eyes were as watchful as a hawk's. I'm Dr. Stobart. Bonjour, Doctor. Have you seen any suspicious characters on the ward? Yeah, I have. A gorilla and a weasel? No. This was a tatty old bear. How was the bear acting suspiciously? Well, he was wearing a homburg. Is that against the law? No, but it's pretty weird for a bear. Have you heard of a guy called Marquet? He's in quarantine, Doc. Right behind this ear door. Marquet is just the man I wanted to see. I wouldn't go in there if I was you. He has anthrax. Oh, he's been poisoned, perhaps. Hmm. Shake my hand. Would you like to shake hands? What for? As a gesture of goodwill. On reflection? No. I have to visit my patient. What for? Routine. I have to check he's still breathing. What if he's not? I'll sign the certificate and register his bed is vacant. That's a cold and distant attitude to death. Well, I've been institutionalized to the point of godlike aloofness. The white coat suits you. Thanks. Yeah, we're really getting into the role of being a doctor now, aren't we? I've watched enough uh, scrubs. <laughs> Where's the janitor? Oh, maybe that's the janitor with his, with his uh, Mr. Shiny. Okay, uh, are you going to let me go in then? Catch you later, officer. Au revoir, doc. All right, in we go, possibly to get poisoned. Oh, no. Marquet? Yes. I am Marquet. I've been expecting you. You have? Well... What are you waiting for? Get it over with. I just want to know what I should do with the gem. The Lachmar gem? Yeah, right here in my pocket. Oh, oh, I thought you were one of the Ashashin. <laughs> Not me. I never inhaled. So, you were sent in my place? Uh, yeah. You could hardly make the trip to Ireland in your condition. What should I do with the gem? Deliver it to the Grandmaster quickly. Tell him that I have found the tripod <laughs> right here in Paris. You have it? Not yet, but it's being taken care of. I... I heard a couple of stooges with a flair for petty crime. Would that be Flap and Guido by any chance? You know them as for Klausner. Uh, he has gone off to Syria on a wild goose chase. They have geese in Syria? He, he, uh, as a theory about the location of the... That's enough excitement for one day, Monsieur Marquet. What are you doing here? Talking to this patient, of course. Monsieur Marquet is my patient. If he hadn't my office to hear that... Okay, I'm going. I'd learned all I could from Marquet anyhow. Ah, there you are, sir. I was just coming to look for you. I finished with your pressure gauge. Thanks, Bunny. What's that noise? It sounds as if someone's having a cardiac arrest. 
It's all right. The doctor's in there with him. Are you sure he was a doctor? Oui, monsieur. He showed me his ID. It was Dr. Braille. There's no Dr. Braille working here. He's an imposter. The door's locked. Help me, officer. Stand back, monsieur. Hello, George. Oh, okay, that was a bit of a sudden cut, but uh, wow, I love this sort of drama. This is great. I mean, who would have thought beginning of this game would end up pretending to be a doctor and then there's this hospital and a man had anthrax poisoning and oh, it's just good stuff. Okay, so, I mean, George said that we learned enough from Marquet there. I don't know if that's true. What did he really tell us? He told us about the tripod and the Grand Master. But that was about it. I found Jacques Marquet. Did he talk? Yeah, he talked. For the very last time. He's dead? Yeah. Killed in cold blood by a bogus doctor. That's despicable. What kind of guy would pass himself off as a doctor and take advantage of a dying man? Was it Khan? No. I don't know who he was, but it certainly wasn't Khan. He got away, out the window. Ooh, that's a scary picture. Have you ever heard of the Hashi Ashin? No. Marquet said that they were his biggest enemy. His biggest enemy was the bogus doctor. Don't remind me, that guy was evil. He had wild, staring eyes like a dead fish. I'll never trust a doctor again. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. The guy said Hashi Ashin. I thought that was just him trying to say assassin, but kind of saying it because, you know, he's dying, so he didn't say it right, like, Hasashin. <laughs> Is it actually a group of people called Hashi Shin? Hashashin? Or maybe that's a joke and it actually was just him saying assassin. Who knows? Um, back to this guy. Do you think the assassin was responsible for killing Marquet? I don't think so. He could have finished him off the first time. Besides, Marquet would have recognized him. He was pumped to the gills with sedatives. He wouldn't have recognized the four horsemen of the apocalypse unless they'd introduced themselves. Right, well, I don't want to look at the thing again, because I get stuck in that bit where I have to look at all of it, but that's the that's the parchment stuff. Uh, do you want me to take your blood pressure, Nico? Hmm, no way. No. Do you want to look after the gem? No, Josh. I'd be too tempted to sell it. Okay, so... That's pretty much it in terms of stuff. I wish we could get rid of some of these items. Surely we don't need the nose and the powder and stuff anymore, do we? Maybe we do. Maybe we do. I guess I'd better go back and talk to that weirdo. Which one? Rosso or Sergeant Mu? Oh, but you're referring to Andre. I'll let you work it out. So we've got some updates on our notebook. Marquet thought I was some sort of assassin. Seems someone is trying to stop him from stop him reforging a sword. He wanted me to deliver the gem to some guy called the Grand Master. Uh, indeed. So I guess, yeah, we can go back to the museum. Can't go back to the hospital anymore. Maybe go speak to the uh, inspectors again, like Nico just said. I'm back very oh yeah, back to the cafe as well, where it all all begun, really. Um I think we'll probably go talk to the policeman again, but we'll actually do this next episode. Until then, thank you very much for watching, and goodbye!